tips, tips about Vim. Welcome back to YouTube's very favorite Vim based show. In fact, in a recent poll that was carried out asking about the best Vim based show of all time, Vim tips actually received 100% of the votes against all other Vim based shows. As you can clearly see in this very, very professional graph. Vim Tips is for the beginner and intermediate Vim user alike, and is hopefully a quick and entertaining way to highlight some of Vim's insanely massive and insanely powerful functionality. In this episode of Vim Tips, I want to talk about special characters. Those are characters that aren't found on your usual keyboard, and how you can actually type them. With an incredibly easy and powerful, lesser known method of inputting these uh, special characters. So let's dive on in. Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. As usual, if you enjoy what I do on this channel, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. And of course, don't forget to check out the other Vim Tips videos. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about special characters. That's like foreign characters, strange blocky characters, maybe even mathematical symbol-based characters. The characters that you can't access very easily or normally on a standard keyboard and how you can get those in Vim. So hopefully you're somewhat aware that computers deal in uh, bits, ones and zeros, and they don't fully understand our characters like ABC. They have to do something called character encoding, which basically means that every character in a character set has a numerical number associated with it. And then that numerical number can obviously be translated quite easily into binary, into the ones and zeros that the computer understands. So as an example, the letter, the character capital A, is actually the decimal number 65. If you'd like to learn more about character encoding, ASCII, UTF-8, Unicode, all that kind of stuff, unfortunately, I'm not gonna cover it in this video because it is a massive topic. However, what I would like to do is point you in the direction of a fantastic video that explains it incredibly well, that's created by the wonderful creator called Tom Scott. The link to that video will, of course, be in the description down below. However, for this video, it's important to know that characters like ABC, actually have some numeric value behind them. So let's get into Vim and have a little look at what I actually mean. To begin with, let's start with a simple example so we can understand the process and what's happening here. The letter E, for example, lowercase e, has a decimal value of 101 and a hexadecimal value of 65. So the letter E actually behind the scenes is the decimal number 101. Obviously, most English language keyboards have the letter E as a standard, so you go into Vim's insert mode by pressing I and just hit E. Fantastic. But what if we didn't have the letter E on our keyboard? What could we do? Well, as long as we have one of those numbers, the decimal, the hexadecimal, the octal number, doesn't matter which one, we can actually type that character without the specific key. And to do that, we use Vim's control V functionality from insert mode. So you have to be in insert mode and then you hit control and V together. And you can see my actual um, character here has actually changed to be like this chevron, meaning it's in like this funky in-between mode. And now what it'll do, the next characters that I put in, it will try and interpret that, that numeric value, um, to be a character. So for example, if I'm in this mode and I just type in 101, which is the decimal number for E, 101, look, it's, uh, I haven't even pressed anything, just 101, and it's converted it to E, that's the decimal value. Great, here's the help page for the uh, control V uh, in insert mode with the underscore digit after it, which explains this process a little bit better. And you can see there's actually a couple of different ways of uh, typing in the numeric or hexadecimal value and that turning into the character that you intended. So you can see this top line, like we just did uh, previously, um, when we don't give it any additional characters, we just do control V, it's gonna try and interpret it as a decimal number. But we can give it other characters, like um, O, X, uh, U, or capital U, and it'll try and interpret it in different ways. So for example, you can see the decimal mode that we just tried it in before can take a maximum of three characters before it just goes, okay, I'm done, I'll take a maximum of three characters, and it can go to a maximum value of 255. With O or capital O, you can take octal, and then after that, it's uh, hexadecimal in different forms with different number of characters and to a different maximum length and these are really important to know so just for clarity remember the capital a character was the number the decimal number 65 so let's just do that really quickly i'm in normal mode i hit i to go into insert mode and then control v to go into the uh, the special mode that it reads the numbers and tries to turn its characters and i'm going to type in uh, 065 and it's turned it into a capital a for me 
Alternatively, I could have just hit uh, 65 and hit enter and got rid of that um, leading zero that I added. Now, if I wanted to type in the letter E with its hexadecimal value, which is 65, then I would do it slightly differently. I'm in insert mode, go into insert mode, control V and then lowercase u, okay? Which uh, in the table before uh, said it uh, interpolates hexadecimal numbers. So I'm in the um, special case now, I'm gonna hit 65 and hit enter. And you can see it's done lowercase e again for me, but using its hexadecimal number this time. I won't bother showing you, but you can use the octal value at the end by doing uh, control V and then lowercase o or capital O. Cool, so now 99% of the times we will not be typing the letter E or the letter capital A. We'll be looking for the letters that we can't access, like a U with an umlaut on top of it. Or for example, a big star character or a musical symbol character. We just have to know the numeric value that is behind that character. However, if you're watching this video and you're saying to yourself, well, that's awful because then I have to know the numeric values for an E with a hat on or a U with an accent on or whatever, do not worry because Vim comes with this incredible built-in that I want to show you right now. The feature in Vim is called diagraphs. And if I just show you, uh, go into command line mode in Vim and type in diagraphs, okay? You can do that or you can use the shorthand of just dig, which is the one that I use always, and hit enter. It will show you on the screen this horrendous list of nonsense, okay? But what I want to do is explain it to you. The output of the diagraphs command will print out several columns on the screen. In my case, my screen size, I have seven columns here on the screen and each column has three columns inside of it. So if I just scroll down a little bit, uh, let's take for example, um, the U with an umlaut on, so this character here, okay? There's three bits of information in this uh, row. So the bit in the middle, will start there, that's the actual character that we're trying to put out. So that's a U with the dots on top. To the right of it is a number. This number is the decimal value associated with that character. So for the U with the dots, the U umlaut, it is 252, 252. So if I was to go back and use my previous method, I know that the uh, number that I'm trying to put in is 252 and I know how to do it. I go, I'm in insert mode, control V and then type 252 and you can see the U with the dots is printed out instead. However, that's kind of rubbish. I have to know the number or find the number before I can print it. The digraphs functionality actually gives you a much quicker and more powerful way to do things. So again, if I use the dig command, the shorthand for the digraphs command, and I scroll down to the uh, the character that we're interested in, again, the U with the dots on, you can actually see the bit to the left, okay? This is actually the digraph now, the digraph that's associated with this character. And the digraph is actually just a quick way of writing that character in a sort of aesthetically correct kind of way or in a shorthand kind of way or in an alias kind of way. So here to get the U with two dots on, you type a U and then the colon character. So sort of like you've done a U with two dots on but in a roundabout way. So you can see some others up here, the E with an accent on is E with a little, uh, a single quotation. So the digraphs is a way that you can enter the character without having to use a number and also enter it in a way that sort of makes sense. Um, because of how it looks or how it's shaped or how it's formed. So how do we actually enter these digraphs then? So if I want to do the U with the umlaut on, I need to remember it's U with a colon. Okay, let me get rid of that. So as before, when we were in insert mode and we used control V to put in numbers and it interpolated it, instead, what we're gonna do, let me just get rid of that, excuse me, we're gonna use a different key combination, which is control K, and that enters us into digraph mode. So control K, and you can see my cursor up here has turned into a question mark. Now I can paint out or sort of type out, draw out my um, digraph and it will interpolate it. So the U was lowercase u and colon, and you can see immediately it has rendered out the U with the two dots on. So let's try another one very quickly, the I with the two dots on. So I'm um, control K and then I and colon, and it's done that. And now what we can do is head back to that digraphs list, and I'm gonna use the uh, capital G to say go to the bottom um, of the list, and we can see some of the more stranger, uniquer characters, okay? So for example, we've got obviously these um, Asian based characters and then we've got like interesting symbols like arrows and stars and um, and, and tilts and and uh, different bars and um, I think it's Sanskrit and um, some ticks and some circles all sorts of stuff we can draw any of these now in our Vim diagram for example the star is one of my favorite ones here um, there is the star entry okay to the right as I said is the decimal value I can do control V and type in 9733 and it'll give me a star or the better version which is the digraph version where I type in star and the number two. 
Um, it's number two because just to the right of it, there is a star one, which is the not filled in version. So the asterisk again is it's a uh, asterisk is a star, so it's a nice way to represent a star character. So let's see that in action. If I do control K and star two, there is a star for me now in my uh, file. Again, control K, star one, I'll draw the other star. And there they are, my, my stars, my digraphs. Excellent, so we've learned that letters and characters actually have a number behind the scenes associated with it. We've learned how we can sort of type any character that we don't have accessible to us on our keyboard by using number. And then we learned one step even better and faster that we can use digraphs to sort of draw or write out that number in a more um, aesthetically understandable way. And of course, we know that we can look up any of the digraph characters by entering the digraphs command. And that's actually the main part of the lesson. Don't forget, you can look up and understand more about digraphs by accessing the help page for it. Just type in digraphs and hit enter, and you can enter the uh, Vim reference manual and the, the help guides and understand more about digraphs and actually how to use them. The other one that I showed you before was the insert mode control V, uh, excuse me, got that wrong, digit help page. And that was the one that shows you the um, number interpolation and which mode you can put it in. So the standard one was decimal, then octal with an O, X for hexadecimal and U for um, other hexadecimals, but longer ones. And in fact, that last bit that I just told you, the U characters here are actually gonna take us into the final sort of special part of the lesson, which if you hadn't already guessed it is emojis or emoticons or whatever the hell they're called now. They are also characters that have a number associated with them. So to do this, we just need to know the number associated with the emoji and we can use our control V method to type the emoji. I use this Emojipedia website to find um, emojis by searching for them. And then in fact, it actually does some, um, some details about how they're drawn in different ways. And it gives me a number associated with them as well. This number is a hexadecimal value that represents the, in this case, top hat emoji. Immediately your brain should be going, ah, we have a hexadecimal value, which means we can type that number into Vim and it will give us the output. So if I just take this uh, top hat emojis code um, and just paste it into uh, Vim just so I've got it to reference. So what I can do then is use control V and capital U because this is a hexadecimal value that is longer than a certain amount. Refer back to that digit help page I was talking about and I can type in that string. So one F three A nine, enter. And you can see, hopefully it's, it's visible there, the top hat symbol. This skull symbol at the top has this code, uh, 1F480. So again, I can do that. I can control V, capital U, 1F480 and hit enter. And now I've got a skull emoticon. The point that I'm trying to make is that you can access any Unicode character with this knowledge. In fact, I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to enter emoticons or emojis particularly in that way when you can just go to uh, this exact same web page and copy and paste them in, but you never know. Finally, whilst we're talking about all of these emoji things in Vim, uh, I'd actually just point you to a Vim plugin that was written by somebody else on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description down below. And this plugin basically um, is what we've talked about but on steroids. And you can see, for example, in this GIF at the bottom, um, how it works. They have their entire list of emojis or emoticons. And when you type things in insert mode, it will try and interpolate that with a nice drop down box. It's a much better way of doing emojis, but at least now you're equipped with that knowledge of what's happening behind the scenes. And that is essentially it. Don't forget to check out the help pages for digraphs and for the control V and the control K characters in insert mode for more information. As usual, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this second episode of Vim Tips. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below and also let me know about some topics that you might want me to cover in future videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Uh, Vim Tips. Tips about Vim. Why can't I? <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Mm -mm. I haven't got my Vim shirt on. This is a travesty. How dare I call myself the host of Vim Tips? <coughs> oh Christ. <coughs> Start from the top. Start from the top. This shit. Right. <laughs>